Boyle's Law is another classic experiment that I really hope you get to try out. In this lesson video though, we're going to look at some of the consequences from it and we're going to look at the equations. Now, one of the examples I like to think about when we're thinking about this is air embolisms, which is a kind of medical problem that divers can get when they come up after a deep dive. Basically, due to changes in pressure, the volume of gas bubbles in their blood can change and this can cause very serious problems. Another example you might be more familiar with though are things like crisp packets. If you go on an aeroplane and you take your crisp packet up with you, you know, don't open it yet, when you get up to a higher altitude you'll notice that the crisp packet has kind of blown up to a big size. And again that is due to the effects that are observed under Boyle's law. So let's have a look at it. It's all down to this equation, PV equals constant. What it's saying is that at a constant temperature, and that's very, very important by the way, at a constant temperature, pressure times volume for a gas is constant. If I have a bubble of gas like this, and P equals 10 and V equals 10, won't worry about units, that makes PV 100. If I increase the pressure to 20, the volume must drop to 5 since P times 5 equals 100. Okay, so PV is staying constant. If the volume goes up to 100, pressure must drop to 1. PV equals constant. So another way of looking at this is like this. The bubble starts at P equals 10 and V equals 10, then shrinks, so P equals 10 and V equals 5. So P1 equals 10, V1 equals 10, P2 equals 20, V2 equals 5, P1, V1 equals P2, V2 equals 100. Okay, simple enough. Let's look at a problem. I quite like this one. A deep sea diver is breathing out air bubbles. The air in each bubble has a volume of two centimeters cubed and a pressure of 300 kilonewtons per meter squared. At the surface, the pressure is 100 kilonewtons per meter squared. So what is the volume of each bubble as it reaches the surface? And what have you assumed? So V1 equals 2 centimetres cubed, P1 equals 300 kilonewtons per metre squared, P2 equals 100 kilonewtons per metre squared, and V2 is unknown. Alright, so nice to write out the variables at the start. The equation is P1 V1 equals P2 V2. We're going to want to find V2, so let's rearrange it for simplicity. V2 equals P1 V1 over P2. Then sub the values in, 300 times 2 over 100, giving us 6 centimetres cubed. And what have we assumed? Well, we assumed the temperature was constant because otherwise the equation would not work. You'll face some more challenging questions, I'm sure, but the basics are all the same. Write out what you know. Rearrange the equation, so what you want is the subject. Plug in the values and write the answer and write units. If you take your time and build up good habits, then you'll be able to tackle problems like these and not even lose marks for sloppiness.